turn now to an in-depth look at all of these school threats which have led to disruptions nationwide and including right here in Michiana. Schools having the tough task of increasing security while also reducing concerns for teachers, parents and students. We brought in someone who can help put this all into context tonight. Mental health expert Marla Gadet joins us now. Marla, thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you. Uh, we got to start this. Why do you think, based on your experience and your profession, why are these threats increasing so quickly right now? Right now they're increasing because we have children who um, are saying, you know, I don't want to be in class. I, I'm going to do something that I know works. And it, it works. Mm. When you say a building's going to get shot up or somebody's going to be harmed, automatic shutdown. It wow. works every single time. Words have weight. It, it, does that mean they're paying attention to what's happening in our discourse right now publicly? Or what does that it, say? Yeah, kids know. They know what's going on and they know the power they have in that particular situation. You see, they're not calling other things. They're not saying, oh, my foot hurts, so call me out. Mm. They're shutting the whole district down. But we, we assume too, and am I safe to say this, I guess, mm -hmm. the assumption that this could be coming from students. Yes, and that is the assumption, but we have to look at it broader than that because we also have teachers, administrators, building workers, Mm -hmm. building engineers, people who can use this ed to their advantage as well. Oh, you changed my schedule. I don't like it, so I'm going to call the school out. Um, you took my, didn't get my, my raise, mm -hmm. right? Or we have all these new laws that are limiting the movement of professions as professionals as well as students, mm -hmm. and they say, oh, okay, well, I need something to do, and I can't use my phone during the day, so I'll just call the school out. How, I mean, when you hear that, though, that means it's hard to pinpoint this, which means it's hard for a solution at the end of the day. Am I right about that? It's definitely hard for a solution because when we talk about threats mm. that are going to harm people, harm self and others, they're always active, they're always real, they're always live. This threat has to be taken serious. In real time. In real time. And so you can't say, oh, well, they were just joking, because what if they weren't? It's always the one time of what if they weren't. You handle it like a suicide threat. Mm. It's always real. Wow. Uh, how does politics come to play in something like this? And, and how can we combat it? How can school boards or, or combat all of this, these tense situations? Yeah, with politics, you gotta think about where, where is this happening? And when did it increase and why? So think about even in our area, Michiana. Most schools or states in this area, Michigan, Indiana, have made a law that there's no cell phones in the school. Mm. Well, kids have FOMO. Fear of missing out is real. So if they don't have that phone, they're not attached. And if you think that I can't do my work and have a phone, well, I'll show you. Uh. Teachers. We have teachers who are 21 years old. The brain doesn't develop till between 25 and 27. Mm -hmm. Teachers 22, 23, they grew up with constant connection. Well, you're telling me I can't have my phone in the classroom and I got work to do, and I also got to check on my mother and I got to do this, and I can multitask. Mm. I was born like this. Mm. Don't take me off now. Wow. They could be making phone calls. So those laws, the law just got changed, mm -hmm. and whoop. Yeah. All the stuff happened. You got, I mean, it's, it's hard to say, and obviously police are investigating where this is coming from, where all these threats are coming from. We're seeing this pop up around the nation. Do you see this stopping anytime soon? No. Hmm. No, and I'm going to tell you why. Because we live in a multi-generational world. If we don't start talking from the silent generation that's still alive and still running the country, all the way to the Z's, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna get the alphas. Mm -hmm. All of us are still alive. We all have to work together. We all have to be cognizant of each other's needs, and then somehow get people in there who can help us understand and meet in the middle and learn to respect each other's values and principles. I gotta ask a couple more questions here. When we talk about mental health and personality disorders, can you expound on that a little bit and how that plays a role in this? Very different. My mental illness may be depression, but my personality disorder may be uh, narcissism, okay? So those two things are very different, uh. and we're looking for, oh, they're so sad, they're so depressed, but they may be narcissistic and playing that way and saying, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sad, I'm depressed, this and that, and all the while plotting on how they can go and close the school down.
<laughs> wow, yeah. So you got to understand what's going on with people mentally and emotionally when we're looking at things with our students, but also our staff. Everybody amongst us has the ability to say, hey, there's a bomb in whatever school. Everyone, don't, in fact, the people who you're not looking at, they're probably the ones who are doing it. That sounds a lot. I guess we'll end with this moving forward. How do we keep the, the symptoms of anxiety down in our kids and our students who are seeing this happening, as you said, in real time? Yeah, so even with our staff, with everyone, anyone working in the school system or attending school, the parents taking the school, you have to have a plan. In order to keep those symptoms down, talk to your children and you yourself create a plan that's safe for your family. Mm -hmm. Call me if you have this. We don't have phones anymore, Mom. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll talk to the school and see if you have permission to leave. I can make a plan. I can do something. Talk to the administrator. And parents, go to the school board meetings. Go to the school board meetings and voice your concerns. Don't just complain. You know, talk to your legislation. Hey, you made this law and now we see these things happening. What can we do? How can we work together? But a lot of it is gonna be just this open communication, constant communication. How you feeling today? What can we do today? How can we earn some uh, points when you get home because you made it through? You know, those type of things. Those, uh, conversations and communication is pivotal in all this, isn't it? Pivotal, uh. pivotal. You can't just put your head in the sand. Mm. We got to talk to each other and face to face, not go. just like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I appreciate you being here. You keep it real, yeah. and it's so important. Thank yeah, yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. much. Yeah, anytime. Thank we'll you. be right back. Stay there.